G'day, my name's Fee, and today... Did someone f***ing get that? So if you grew up in the 90s, you know what this is, and if you listen really, really carefully, you can hear the ghosts of dial-up. So, we're gonna turn this into a Bluetooth speaker and a phone dock, and this is how we're gonna do it. So we're going to start by parting out the old girl. We're going to take out some of the components that we don't need and I can put them away for another project. All we really need is the chassis, the keypad and the headset. Now I've got to admit I was really excited. It was like opening up a treasure chest. I love old tech. I mean look at that circuit board. It's a bit of art in itself. You know what? Maybe I'll put some resin on it or frame it later on. Now this keypad is gonna act as the dock, so we're gonna have the phone sitting on top of this. We'll take this little green thing out, and then we got this little piece here, which will happily sit that phone without slipping. Now the handset was a really, really tricky thing to pull apart, because there's no screws or bolts or clips or anything like that. I tried my darnest to get this thing open, and after several attempts, I was really baking to the point where I might just have to take some force to it. I mean, it, it wouldn't open. Luckily I'm more patient than that and I finally cracked it open with a bit of twisting and inside I had the headset speaker and the actual microphone with rubber grommets but we've got an ethernet port which I want to try and use um, so I can connect that little cable in. So time to pack everything up and get started on pulling apart that really cheap speaker. Now this speaker was only 20 bucks but it's got some really good parts. We've got a little button module, we've got the speakers themselves, we've got the motherboard, the battery, and a radio as well, which is gonna be great. There is an LED light on it, but it's gonna be useless for this. Also, the cables, gotta be careful with them because they are fragile, but I could reuse all of them, including that little ribbon cable there on the motherboard. It also came with a radio, which is really cool. So I lucked out with these little bunker busters because they're actually the perfect size for my phone, but they're thick boys, so I'm gonna have to cut some holes in the front of the handset. Didn't wanna do that, but it's fine. I've got a hot knife and they'll protrude and look pretty groovy. They'll still be hidden because they'll be facing down on the actual phone. I had to use a template, which was the speakers. I'm gonna cut inside the middle of that with a hot knife. I'd recommend wearing some face protection and have a fan going. I don't know how noxious this stuff is, but you'd be a dead not to wear some sort of protection when you're doing this. It took me a while to file down the hole and get it to fit perfect, but with a bit of patience, I got there. Alright, so I really want to use this spring cable and hopefully the sound will travel from that motherboard to the speakers. So now it's time to rewire those speakers and then wire it up to the ethernet port. Hopefully the spring cable I just showed you will send through reasonable sound quality. So now we've got to pull apart the keypad and cut it up. It comes out in three parts. We'll start with the facade. The facade has a little section there that I'm cutting out which will cover our cables and the Bluetooth speaker buttons. We'll also have to cut the buttons in half and these will get sandwiched in between each section. So there was a bit of cutting and fine tuning involved with these little parts that move, just because I needed clearance to make sure it's that flush. The small piece you see there in the background actually has a hinge on it already so I'm super gluing some of these little parts together and dry fitting it first and then gluing it while it's on the chassis so I know that it's going to sit flush. The next section is actually a backing board where I'm going to put the buttons and I'm also going to put little notches for the cables. 
broke my heart to do this, but in the name of art, the show must go on. And I rewired this little thing with very little space for my fingers to get in and put those little connectors on. But we got there in the end. Now, you can see just here, the motherboard is very close. I'm just wiring everything up to make sure it fits. So I found that when I held the headset against the tabletop, it actually created this nice reverb effect. So I'm putting some magnets into the headset so I can make a magnet base that does the same thing later on. Back to our compartment. This thing needs to have some holes drilled in it so that we can accommodate these cables. They're going to be then glued onto the bottom of the chassis. But first, we've got to glue that backing board onto the actual front facade. And that's a tricky endeavour because you've got to make sure that you get it at the right angle where the cables can poke up, but you get enough space for them to tuck in and put the lid on. Now while I was at it, I thought I'd re-glue the motherboard back to the chassis because I wanted to make sure it didn't overheat. When in doubt, redo. Now for the buttons. This was a very tricky endeavour. I had to make sure that they were spaced correctly and that there was no leeway for error because otherwise the buttons would get stuck or we wouldn't be able to line them correctly. So after a lot of drilling and changing sizes and a bit of filing, I only had one piece so this literally had to work the first time around. I even hand drilled this little section here for the LED lights so that they could shine through and the microphone. Now as you can see I recycled some of those plastic bits so I could raise the board and make sure that the buttons had clearance. Resoldered the radio because that broke off straight away and just put that aside and then got started on filing out a nice little section that I could lay out the charging cable for the phones. This was a bit tricky because I had to get it nice and tucked in there without damaging the cable or compromising any of the other components. And then I could finally readjust that little radio cable and fix it in place. Now it's time to glue in those cables. I figured they'd move around too much and just damage anything inside if they were wriggling, so I glued them onto the chassis just lightly, just so I could tuck them in and they could bend around. The final component was the ribbon cable. If I broke this, I was up sh creek, so I figured I'd do it last, be very careful with it, and then get into stuffing all the cables through the front panel, putting on the little lid that hides the compartment, and then drilling the backing on locking that little compartment in. So it's a mad build, it took a bit of time to work out how I was gonna do everything, but in the end of the day, I've got it working, We've got all our cables hidden away here um, for three different phones and our different control panels for the Bluetooth speaker, which is awesome. Aux or axe cable, however you want to say it, um, hidden in there as well. And then our speakers. I probably won't test this just yet, just because, um, well, I don't want to get demonetized, but you know what, f it, let's do it. very cool little uh, project and maybe if you're lucky at some time in the future I might give it away to one of you lucky people. But for now, as always, stay kind, stay curious and stay creative. I'll see you next build.